Welcome to the Oasis. My name is Mike and I'm back here in the UK with the Apple Vision Pro. And I've been using this thing over the past week to really try and get a good feel for what this headset is all about. And I think my takeaway so far is that this headset is best use for productivity and watching movie content. Believe it or not, I don't think the best use case is going outside and using this thing in public. But the fact of the matter is, this headset is insanely expensive at 3,499 US dollars. And it kind of got me thinking like, how much of the Apple Vision Pro experience can you get on the MetaQuest 3, which is just 499 US dollars? So I thought, as the main use case is productivity and watching movies, I would put this to the test and do an apples to apples, no pun intended, comparison. So. I've got a list of tasks with me here, so we're gonna go through the tasks and see how the Apple Vision Pro handles them compared to the MetaQuest 3. Let's dive in. So this is a good example of multitasking on Apple Vision Pro. I've got a bunch of browser windows open, I've got music, I've got Twitter, I've got my email over there, I've got text messages here, I've got the Apple website here, and check this out, this is insane. I can take the iPhone from the website and I can place it in my space and I can rotate it round. You can see the shadow below it as well, which is just nuts. But this is just a good example of multitasking on Apple Vision Pro. Let's see what we can do on the Quest 3. Now I've got my window in front of me so I can choose uh, the Twitter app, for example, and then I can move that to the left. But we're kind of limited in terms of what we can do. Another window. Let's try another one, no. So. You can only have three browsers open all at once in the Quest 3, but I can go and put my music on just like I did in the Vision Pro. Okay, so I've got my music. I'm going to put that over there, put Twitter in the middle. So they're kind of fixed on one long plane like this, but I mean, it, it works. Let's see if we can do that thing with the iPhone and pull it out the screen. That'd be really cool if we can do that on here as well. Uh, okay, so you can rotate it in the browser, but you can't pull it out and put it into your environment. So if you wanted to work like this, you could have a Google Doc open in the middle here. You could have your music going on, which is, you know, almost there in terms of the experience. Now, when it comes to productivity, you're going to be spending some of your time writing documents. Now, the thing is, right now, it's not very good typing on the Apple Vision Pro using the virtual keyboard. You're really going to want to use a physical keyboard. So if I just turn this on, it's already connected by Bluetooth to my headset. And now I can click on the screen. Hello from the Apple Vision Pro. Now the crazy thing is that if I look at the keyboard while I'm typing, I get a little preview screen above it. And the crazy thing is this is actually tracked by the keyboard itself. And it means you can just focus on your hands typing. Pretty cool. Let's see how the Quest holds up. Now, just like the Apple Vision Pro, if you wanted to do any sort of productivity in this thing, the uh, the virtual keyboard kind of sucks. So you're going to want to use a physical one. And thankfully, there is one supported. And it's this one here, which is the Logitech. Hey, <laughs> I'm typing this using a keyboard connected to the Meta Quest 3. And it works. So just like you can on the Vision Pro, you can use a keyboard and you can also use the trackpad here as well if you wanted to do some work in this thing. Another productivity tool that you're likely going to be using if you're working in a headset is of course email and email is built right into the Vision OS system. So it's got a dedicated app. You just look at it, click it and open your email. Hey, this is just a test. And the funny thing is just like on iPhone, you get a little message at the bottom saying sent from Apple Vision Pro. Now, when it comes to email using the Quest 3, there isn't actually any email apps or any apps that you can really connect your email to. So you kind of have to resort to using the browser. I'm a boomer, so I've got like an old school yahoo.com email address. <laughs> Don't judge me. This is just a test email from the Meta Quest 3. <laughs> so you don't get any like preview window like you do on the Vision Pro where it's tracked, but I mean, it works. You could you could get some work done if you needed to. One of the neat features of Apple Vision Pro is spatial video. Now I showed this in my little preview, but I've got my photos app here. I can scroll up. I can resize this window and bring it 
more into focus. You've got this kind of cool shadow effect below the window, which is really nice. Uh, but just here, I've got a spatial video of my dog Ruby. And when I watch it, I can really get a sense of depth here. It's kind of like a 3D video, but you can record it with your iPhone and you can record it directly from Apple Vision Pro. Now let's check out spatial video on Quest 3. So we go to files and they actually already have spatial videos enabled here in the files, which I've never actually seen before. So let's have a little look and see hey, what that looks my like. My name is Andrew Bosworth. Hey. Most people call me Boz and I'm the CTO here at Meta. I'm excited to announce that with V62, we are rolling out support for spatial videos in our Quest headsets. There you go. From the main man himself. <laughs> Quest 3 now supports spatial videos. So if you record spatial videos on your iPhone, you can then watch them in the Quest 3. It looks just as good, just like it is on Apple Vision Pro. If you haven't tried spatial videos yet, I'd highly recommend it. Very cool that it's supported now on Quest. A feature that I find quite useful with Apple Vision Pro is that you can send text messages directly from the headset. Now this is synced to my US account, so I don't have all my contacts here, but I do have some important people in my life and GT is one of them. So I'm just gonna say, hey dude, uh, I'm just doing a quick demo right now of text on Apple Vision Pro, send. When it comes to sending messages on the Quest 3, you've got two options. You can use WhatsApp or you can use Messenger. So let's send a quick message to one of my friends. Hopefully I can use the keyboard. Hey dude, you free next week for a coffee. Ash is one of my old friends. Let's see if he's around next week for a coffee, but that's one way of doing it. So the other way is by using Messenger. And let's say, hey dude, are you free next week for a coffee? Hopefully I don't end up double booking myself, uh, but that's what it looks like. Oh, okay, so I could actually do them at the same time if I wanted to. So that is actually kind of cool. I learned something new now. So you can actually have a window there with your Messenger, your Twitter, and your WhatsApp. You're just limited to three, but I'm surprised that you can actually do that. I didn't know that. So I'm impressed that the Quest 3 handled that pretty well. The Apple Vision Pro has voice commands built in using Siri. So I can just say, hey Siri, open Builder's Journey. And there we go. Let's start the fire. <laughs> okay, so let's try voice commands on the Quest 3 using voice commands on Quest 3. So I've never actually done this before. Ah, okay, this makes sense now. Voice commands are currently only available to people using MetaQuest in the United States with English set as the default language. Ah, it's a shame. So unfortunately, you can't do voice commands unless you're living in the United States right now. One thing that surprised me about Apple Vision Pro is that it works very well with applications that weren't necessarily designed to be used with the Apple Vision Pro. And a good example of that is Discord. So I predominantly do a lot of my work in Discord and doing Discord calls is something that I do almost every day. So I'm gonna do a quick call to uh, GT. Let's see if he actually answers. I haven't actually told him I'm doing this. There he is. You all right? Yeah, you're right, dude. I'm just doing a very quick test. Uh, I'm just explaining to people that I can do a Discord call using my persona and it just works. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same as Zoom then, is it? Exactly the same. Just click the link and you're in. I'll catch up with you later on. Cheers, Bye. mate. Bye. <laughs> and that's my persona, by the way, if you haven't seen it already. It's a little bit weird looking. It's just wild that you can do a video call using your persona in a non-native app and it just works. It's the same with Zoom as well, by the way. So let's see how the Quest holds up on that. Hey, dude. Are you all right? So is it just is it just voice only? I'm because I'm doing this from the Quest Three right now. Yeah, it's voice only. Yeah. Yeah, voice only. Yeah, I, I thought that was going to be the case, but um, I, I guess it just goes to show you could do a voice call from the Quest Three. You just couldn't do a video call with your like avatar. I'm pretty sure there was a point in time where you could do a video call using your avatar. I just can't remember what it's called. I think it was called Facebook Worlds. You could do that back then. If I find a clip, I'll show you, but it doesn't seem that that's allowed anymore. Another great use case for the Apple Vision Pro is watching movie content. Now the Vision Pro has a Disney Plus native app, so you can go in there and you can watch a bunch of movies and TV shows, and they've even got their very own virtual environments. So you can watch your TV show in the speeder on Tatooine, which is pretty cool. Now I can't show you directly in the headset for copyright reasons, but 3D movies like Avatar The Way of the Water look stunning in the Apple Vision Pro. 
Watching movies on Quest 3 is a little bit different. You can't watch them in pass-through with this floating screen in front of you natively from the headset. So you have to use an application like this one called Big Screen, which is free and it's available to download from the store. But as you can see, once you're in here, you can connect your Disney Plus account and you've got access to all your movies and TV shows. The only shame is that it doesn't have 3D movies listed in here right now. Seems that that's exclusive to the Apple Vision Pro. But the viewing experience is very cool. You've got this nice environment and you've got this huge virtual screen in front of you. So if you wanted to just relax and watch a movie, you could totally do that in the Quest 3. The final thing that I want to compare with the Apple Vision Pro is gaming. Riding the rails in this game is just so cool. But unfortunately, the latency is just... You can see there's a slight delay there, which makes you feel disconnected from the game. Just gaming on Apple Vision Pro isn't that great right now. I'm sure it'll be improved in the future because we certainly saw that with Meta. They improved the hand tracking dramatically over the years and I'm sure Apple will do the same. But as of right now, just doesn't feel great playing hand tracked games on this thing. So now I'm going to show you a game on the Quest 3 using hand tracking alone, just for a direct comparison to show you how good the hand tracking is on this thing. This is called the Move Fast Demo, and this really just highlights how good Meta are at tracking hands very, very quickly. Check this out. It's literally just tracking my hands flawlessly. No latency, even if I move them around really, really fast. That's really impressive. If you want to check this one out for yourself, it's called Move Fast and it's available for free on the App Store. Go check it out. So there we have it. That's my comparison of the Apple Vision Pro to the MetaQuest 3 and it held up surprisingly well. There is a lot of stuff that you can do in the MetaQuest 3 that you can also do on the Apple Vision Pro. It's just that the Apple Vision Pro experience is much more seamless, it's easier to use and it is much more capable, but then again, it is seven times the price. So if you're interested in trying out VR, getting into spatial computing, maybe trying out a little bit of productivity in a headset, then I'd highly recommend checking out the Quest 3. It offers insane value when you compare it to a $3,499 Apple Vision Pro. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments down below. Leave a cheeky little like if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe for all my future VR, AR and spatial computing content. And as always, <laughs> I'll see you all on the next one. Cheers.